password, which I used for everything, including this email account. Now, one morning, I woke up and went to check my email and found that I was locked out, and I tried everything I could to get back in, but I couldn't, so I found a phone number for that particular email service, and I spoke to a real-life person who told me that my account had been hacked, apparently. Someone had gotten my password, gone in, changed the password, and there was nothing they could do for me whatsoever. I had to then go make a new email account, get that information out to everyone under the sun, let them know not to use the old email address, and then I had to change my password on everything that I had with that same password. Now, none of this would have ever happened if I had the dark web monitoring from NordVPN because they would have let me know that my information was floating around and being used on the dark web. I hope everyone can learn a little something from my huge mistake and take this opportunity to get the exclusive NordVPN deal by clicking the link in the description box. It's risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. Plus, you can get an extra four months free on a two-year plan. Thank you so much once again to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to the case. Tonight we are traveling on over to Illinois. A shout out to all my friends. This is the case of Tim and Becky Bleifnick. It is often referred to as the family feud killer. It occurred on February 23rd, 2023 in Quincy, Illinois. Becky Bleifnick was born as Rebecca Bernadette Postel. She was born in Quincy, Illinois on November 19th, 1981. She was 41 at the time of this case. She graduated from Quincy Notre Dame High School, where she was named valedictorian. Then she went on to graduate cum laude from Quincy University with a bachelor's in biological science and a minor in chemistry. She went on to work for Sanofi Aventis as one of their top performing pharmaceutical sales reps. But she always saw herself as working hands-on in the medical profession and helping people. So she left for a career in nursing. Becky graduated summa cum laude from Blessing Riemann College of Nursing and Health Sciences, and she received the Faculty Outstanding Senior Award. She worked for Quincy Medical Group in gastrointestinal surgery before transitioning to Blessing Hospital's emergency room. In 2020, she was nominated for the International Daisy Award, which honors exceptional care given by extraordinary nurses. At the time of the case, she was working at Blessing Hospital in Vascular Access, and she was working towards 
was working as a pharmaceutical rep so that she could be a stay-at-home mom to her children. She was the type of mother who would make homemade Halloween costumes for her children, the kind of costumes that everyone would be amazed with. She helped her sons make posters for school that always came out beautifully, and she was completely involved with all of their activities, even things like fishing and looking for frogs and doing all the sports that the boys wanted to do. Her Catholic faith was extremely important to her, and she worked hard to instill this same level of faith in her sons. Now, at the time of this case, her sons were 12, 10, and 5, and they meant the world to her. In 2019, Tim went on Family Feud with his brothers and his father, and the question that he was asked by Steve Harvey was, quote, what's something you regret from your wedding night? audience as he said, honey, I love you, as if he was talking to his wife. And then he turned back to Steve to answer the question, and he said, say I do. And then he also turns back to the audience again, and he says, but not my mistake. So he was saying that is what would be up there, you know. He doesn't regret saying I do. But that would be an answer that would be up there. And it was. I think it was number two or something. Now, a lot of people who have heard that think it has some foreshadowing on the case. But take with it what you will. You know, he was playing the game. Anyway, the first five years of their marriage was great. Until it wasn't. manipulative and controlling, and he never helped out with the children or with the house. And it got even worse when Becky said that she was going back to school to become a nurse. He really did not want her to do that. He would later explain that it was because he felt it was too much for her, that it was just for her own sake. But anyway, she went back to school regardless of his feelings, and he did not make an effort to help out with the children while she was in school to try to help take off, you know, some of the load. In January of 2021, Tim filed discuss exactly why he wanted a divorce, but he hinted that Becky had had a change in her behavior and personality after she became a nurse. But according to Becky's sister, Sarah, Tim was just unhappy with her because he no longer felt like he could control her now that she was out in the workforce. Becky tried in vain to keep their marriage together. She really didn't want to get a divorce, and she tried to talk Tim into going for marriage counseling, but he refused. 
somebody had kind of, you know, scoped it out, seen exactly what they were going to do, and then came back the next night around the same time. The same camera also captured similar activity one week before on Valentine's Day. Now, another neighbor had some footage which showed a person riding a bike in the direction of Becky's house on the actual night of the murder, and it was right before the time of the murder. And then they saw the person driving the bicycle in the opposite direction a little bit after the murder would have occurred. But once again, they could not see who the person was. The only thing they could see was that the bike did not have reflectors on the wheels. That was all. Authorities found a blue bicycle abandoned on the side of the road about a half a block from Tim's house, and it had no reflectors on the wheels. So investigators managed to get a search warrant for Tim's house, and they searched his house and his car as he stood there and watched. They found some things which I will tell you about in a couple moments, but first, let me tell you about Becky's sister, Sarah. She told the police that more than a year before Becky died, she had sent her this text, quote, if something ever happens to me, please make sure the number one person of interest is Tim, as that is who would do something to me. I'm putting this in writing that I'm fearful he will somehow harm me, come after me, or will try to do something to me that takes me away from the kids or the kids away from me. He has already lied multiple times to paint himself as a victim and me as the perpetrator when it is absolutely the other way around. No, I have not sent this to mom or dad as I don't want them to be out of their minds with worry." End quote. Becky's sister Sarah said that the text was prompted by the murder of one of Becky's colleagues. 
like clearly she had a man over the house and maybe that was her boyfriend for a little while, I don't really know. And Tim didn't like the idea of his wife being with another man. So he killed her. Could that be it? Maybe. Or was it that he didn't want to have to pay child support and alimony? He wanted the house back. He wanted the full custody. Was that it? So he got rid of her so he would get everything. You know, he would get the whole house. He would get full custody. He wouldn't have to pay her. Could that be it? Maybe. Was it like the sister said that he no longer felt in control? She was now an independent woman. She had a job. She had a new man. She didn't have to listen to him. And the courts were now telling him what he had to do. Could that be it? Maybe. There is also another theory that has to do with Tim's father, Ray. Becky had raised concerns that Ray quote, had a history of perversion and abusing minor children. Not her children. Somebody's children. And she was going to bring witnesses to the divorce trial the following week. You know, the week after the murder. If she hadn't been murdered, she was going to bring these witnesses to testify and tell what they knew and possibly give proof to the statement that his father was uh, a danger to the children. Now, already, I believe, you know, this information had been already brought up prior to the divorce trial, and the judge had agreed to only allow the children to be with their grandfather if it was a supervised visit, but I believe she wanted to take it to another level at the divorce trial and by bringing these witnesses it would have more you know more leverage so some people have said that he killed her so that this trial would never happen and that this information would not be made public is that it maybe but i would have to guess that maybe it was a little bit of all of these things. Perhaps as far as Tim was concerned, it would be a lot easier on him and his family if Becky were gone. And the fact that his children would have no mother was not overly concerning to him. In fact, I saw a piece of the trial I, I don't know, was it, it maybe his uh, sister-in-law who said to him, instead of Googling the things that you Googled, like how to silence a pistol and how to clean gunpowder off your hands, maybe you should have searched about childhood PTSD instead. So anyway, it's very, very tragic. It's really a horrible, horrible case. I'm back to the issue of the game show, in my opinion, and most people who talk about it. What he said at the game show has nothing to do with the case. It represents nothing. The only thing valuable about that is that it got this case a lot of attention because he was kind of not a celebrity, but, you know, there was a hook to drag you in. It's like somebody who was on Family Feud turned out to be a killer, you know? So that is about all I have to say about this case. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you found it to be thought-provoking. I look forward to seeing you in the next
next video. And I hope you have a wonderful day or night, wherever you are. Bye-bye.